For our first transformation, we want to show only the names of the students that did not make the required pass rate and their test scores. And we want this to be dynamic, so if we change the required pass rate from 90 to 60 and hit refresh, our table updates automatically. Let's see how we can do this. We have our source data in a table format called test score data. And the required pass rate is also in a table format called pass rate. First, let's send the pass rate table to Power Query. Here in the query editor, we will still need to do some quick transformations to this table. But for now, let's send this back to Excel as a connection only. Next, let's send our test score data to Power Query. Now we have our two tables in our query editor. But what we actually want is for our pass rate table to be an object so that we can insert it into our test score data query. Let's remove the change type step as we don't need that. To create the object, right click on the 90 and click on drill down and the value for the pass rate is only returned. And if we look to the left here, we can see that this no longer shows as a table. Instead, it's now an object that we can use. In our test score data query, let's perform a filter step on our test score column. You can filter on any value you like, it doesn't really matter, and click on OK. And we have the filtered rows step here in our applied steps. Now we need to assign our pass rate object that we just created here in the filtered row step. So we will do this in our formula bar. Let's delete the value that we just filtered on and start typing pass rate and the IntelliSense brings it up, click on that and hit enter and our query updates to show no student names as there were no students that had a pass rate of 90 but we want students that scored less than the pass rate so in the formula bar remove the equal sign and replace it with the less than sign and press enter and our table updates correctly. Let's send this back to Excel Let's test out the automation by changing the pass rate to 75 and hitting refresh and everything works perfectly. Here we have student test scores out of 150. What we need is a report that provides us with the student names that scored below the average and by how much they were below that average. Here's how to do this. I've named this table test score data. Let's send this to Power Query. First, we need to calculate the average. So let's select the test score column and in the transform tab, click on statistics and click on average. And just the average of those test scores is returned and not our table, as this was a data transformation that was used performing a list function. We do, however, still need to perform more transformations on our table. So we need to get the table back. But before we get to that, if you would like even more Power Query tips, tricks, and exclusive discounts to my upcoming courses, please be sure to subscribe to the Query Editor. It's my free weekly newsletter delving into all things Power Query. The link is in the description below. Now let's get back to our video. The last step that returned our table was here in the change type step. So all that we need to do is click on the calculated average step so that it's selected. Then here in the formula bar, we're going to click on the FX to insert a step and it returns our last applied step, which is the calculated average. But as we want our table to be returned and we know that the change type step was the last step to return our table, let's start typing change type and the IntelliSense brings it up and select that and press enter and we get our table back. Let's rename this step. I'm going to rename this to get table back. You can call it whatever you like. Before we move on to the next step, I just want to remove the space in the calculated average step as this is going to help us in our next step. Next, in the add column tab, click on custom column. And here is where we will calculate test scores that are either below or above the average. Let's call this column below average. Next, let's double click on test score to include this in our formula and insert a minus. 
The value that we want to subtract is the average that we calculated here in calculated average. But we don't have calculated average as an available column. So what we can do is type it out here and click on OK. And we have our calculations showing by how much the students were either above or below the average. Let's change this to a whole number and filter on all the values that are below zero. And that's what our report shows, all students that are below the average. Let's send this back to Excel. Let's add some new data here. And hit refresh. And our query updates automatically based on the new average. Let's say you've created a query to check the variances from the previous month's payroll file to the current month, so September shows no discrepancies from your previous month being August. But when the October payroll file is loaded into your folder and you hit refresh, there's a variance in your salaries. The October file is 51,000 less than the September salary file. You've checked with HR and they've confirmed that no new hires or fires were made in the month. We need to investigate a bit deeper to find out what's going on. Let's create a query to show us exactly where the discrepancies are between our two months. In a blank workbook, click on Data, Get Data, From File, From Excel Workbook, and let's select our September payroll file. Here in the navigator window, we can see our export sheet that shows our September payroll data, which shows our employees' first and last names, their job title, department, and salary. There are some blank columns here that we will want to exclude, so let's click on Transform Data. Here in the query editor, Power Query performs some transformations for us to get the data into the proper table format, as the source data was not in a table format. Let's rename this query to September 2022. And if we scroll to the right here, we see all these null value columns. So let's select them, hold down the shift key and select the last column, right click and select remove columns. Then let's select all our data by pressing control A and in the home tab, go to remove rows and click on remove blank rows. So now we're only left with our September payroll information. Next, let's bring in our October payroll data. To do this, right click on the September query and click on duplicate. And in the source step of this duplicate query, let's click on the gear icon. And here we see the file path of our September payroll file. Let's click on browse and instead click on our October payroll file and click OK. And if we click on the drop down of our formula bar, we can see that our October payroll file is now our source. Let's rename this query to October 2022. Next, we're going to create our exception report. Let's click on the September query to select it. Then in the home tab, click on the drop down next to merge queries and click on merge queries as new. Here in the Merge Queries dialog box, we have our September payroll as our primary table and let's select October as our secondary table. Next, in our September table, let's select our first name column, hold down the Shift key and select Department so that all these columns are now selected. And in the October table, let's do the same. We want to match everything from these four columns in both our September and October tables. And for our join kind, let's select the full outer join as we want to join all rows from both our tables where these four columns match. Why did we not choose the salary column? Because we know that the discrepancy lies in our salary column. So that column won't match, but we still want the rest of the columns to match even though the salaries may not be the same. Let's click OK. And we get this October column with a list of tables and each table brings in the data from our October payroll. And if we click to the right of the table, we can see that everything in our first row matches for both months. And if we check our second row, everything appears to be the same, except our salaries are not the same. Let's expand our tables and uncheck department only. 
So keep everything that you want to check and let's keep user original column name as prefix checked as this will help us to know which columns are for October and click OK. Now to check where our salaries disagree, let's click on the Add Column tab and click on Conditional Column. And let's name this new column Exception. Let's choose Salary for our column name and keep Operator as Equals. And let's change our value to a column. And let's choose the October Salary column and type Null as our output, else we want Exception to be returned. So the condition will show as null if our salaries in our September column agrees to the salaries in our October column, else it will return an exception if they disagree. Let's click OK. And we get this column that we can now use to filter on the exceptions only. And let's send this to Excel to have a closer look. We can see that Kate Gomez's salary was increased from 34,600 to 45,000, Valerie's salary was completely removed, Teresa's salary was increased, and she was given an extra salary as a sales rep. Claude's salary was increased, and poor Ronnie, the financial manager's salary, was removed completely. And if we sum up these salaries and calculate the difference, it agrees to the difference of 51,000, which was what was calculated here in this query. Remember, this was the control that helped us kick off this investigation, and we can now see what an important control that was. In fact, we're going to learn how to do just that in our next transformation. We're going to learn how to create a query that calculates the difference in sales from the previous month to the current month, and when a new month is added, we want our report to update dynamically. First, let's send this to Power Query. Here in the Query Editor, click on the Order Date column in the Add Column tab, click on Date, go down to Month, and select Month. And we get this column with our month number. Then click on the Order Date column again to select it, and this time let's add a column for Name of Month. And we get a column with our month names. And let's add one more column for Start of Month. These three columns are going to help us in creating our calculation. Next, select the month column, then in the Transform tab, click on Statistics and click on Maximum. And we get the maximum value of our month column only, and no table anymore. But as we need to perform more transformations to our table, we need to get it back. The last step that returned our table was here in the inserted start of month step. So all we need to do is click on the calculated maximum step so that it's selected. Then here in the formula bar, we're going to insert a step by clicking on the FX. And it returns our last applied step, which is the calculated maximum. Let's instead type inserted start of month. The IntelliSense brings it up, so let's select it and press Enter, and we get our table back. Let's rename this step. I'm going to call this Get Table Back, and press Enter. You can call it whatever you like. Before we move on to the next step, I just want to remove the space in the calculated maximum step. This will help us for our next step that we're going to perform. Let's click on our Get Table Back step. Next, in the Add Column tab, click on Conditional Column. Let's create a condition that will show us our current and previous months. Let's name this column Current or Previous. Our condition would be as follows. If our month column equals a value, you can put in any value you like. I'm going to put in 9. Then we want our output to display as current. Let's add clause. Else, if our month column equals 8, then we want our output to display as previous. Else, we want null. And click on OK. And we get our current or previous month column showing our current, null, and previous values. But this is not really dynamic. So let's click on the drop down here in the formula bar. And let's find our values that we used as placeholders, which was the 9. And let's replace this with our calculated maximum step. The IntelliSense brings it up. Let's click that. And let's do the same here for the 8. 
and this has to be our previous month so that would be calculated maximum minus one and let's press enter and now we've made our formula dynamic next in the transform tab click on group by and select advanced we want to group by our current or previous month column as well as our month name column and month column our new column name will be total monthly sales let's use sum as our operation and the column that we want to sum is our sales value column and click on OK. So now in our current or previous month column, let's filter on text filters that does not equal null and click on OK. And we now have only our current and previous month showing. Let's click on our month name, hold down the control key and click on month and total monthly sales, right click and select remove other columns as these are the only three columns that we need. Then in the add column tab, click on the drop down next to index column and select from zero. And let's do that again, but this time let's select from one. We're going to merge this query with itself. Just stick with me. You'll see where I'm going with this. In the home tab, click on merge queries and click on merge queries. And here in the Merge Queries dialog box, we have our Table 1 as our primary table, and let's select it again as our secondary table. Then select the first index column in our primary table that starts at 0, and select the index.1 column in our secondary table as we want to match these two columns. Our join kind will be the default which is left outer, and click on OK. And we now have a column with our tables from our secondary table. Let's expand these tables. We only need our total monthly sales column from our secondary table, as we have all the other columns already here in our query. And let's uncheck use original column name as prefix and click on OK. For our total monthly sales column, let's change our data type to currency. And let's do the same for our total monthly sales.1 column. Next, let's select our total monthly sales column, hold down the control key and select our total monthly sales.1 column, and in the add column tab, click on standard and click on subtract. And we now have a column showing our difference between our current and previous month. Let's only keep our month name, total monthly sales, total monthly sales.1 column and the subtraction column. Right click and select remove other columns. Next, let's click on our total monthly sales.1 column, hold down the control key and select our subtraction column. Right click, go to full and select down. And our values have been filled down. Let's rename our subtraction column to difference from current to previous and hit enter. And let's only keep our month name, total monthly sales column, and difference from current to previous column. Right click and select remove other columns. Next, select your month name column. Then in the transform tab, click on pivot column. Here in the pivot column dialog box, we want our total monthly sales to be our values column and click on OK. And we now have our calculation in the format that we want. Let's send this back to Excel and let's change the formatting for our values to currency. And let's test out the automation by bringing in our October data and let's hit refresh and everything updates perfectly.